hook on your rear valve stem. Okay, and then we have enough slack up here. Hook our blue one onto the front. And these are a much better connection than my old one. Same thing on the other side, hook the rear up first to keep them from getting so tangled. Clear to the rear. Good secure fit. Okay. Look this one here. Okay, so now, and that's our tire pressure of our tires. 35 pounds. Okay, if we want a lot of air out, we just open that valve. And we're losing air now. Okay? How's it going, guys? So I wanted to make a quick video. Um, this is going to kind of be a, a tutorial slash I'm going to show you what you need to build an air down, air up kit. Okay, now this still depends on whatever compressor you have, how much air it can move, the cubic, what is it, cubic feet um, of air or something like that. So I would suggest a bigger one if you're gonna to try to air up and air down all four tires. So that's on you, uh, but what I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna show you how to build an air up, air down kit that hooks to every tire at once, and it will fluctuate the air pressure in all your tires so that you have even pressure amongst all of them. Okay, so what we've done here is we bought these parts. Let me put the camera right here, I'll show you. So, uh, and we just went with kind of some of the cheaper stuff that we could get a hold of because we're gonna to try to keep this cost effective. So we've got a quarter inch, 25 foot poly hose. And I went with this poly because you can see it's braided. It's, and uh, when, if you run over it and bend in the gravel and stuff like that, it should, uh, should hold up a little better strength wise. And then I went with a central um, digital airflow regulator. Okay, so this will let you see your air pressure that you hooked up to digitally. Now this is kind of up to you guys. I know a lot of you old school guys prefer um, an analog meter. Uh, one that doesn't require batteries and all that and that's completely your call you don't have to do a digital one i just like digital because you can set it easier and you can read it easier and it's more accurate in my opinion um, so then i've got a t here okay this is all quarter inch stuff um, and then obviously going to need four of these for your valve stems okay and i just bought these at uh, Harbor Freight, I believe, but I'll drop a link for a better option that you can order them online. I just bought these at Harbor Freight just to be quick. Um, then you're going to need um, these here, which I just got at the plumbing section in Lowe's, but again, I'll leave you a, a link for that. And I think there's four of these as well. Three. Number four. So basically you've got a quarter inch bar and then you have a quarter inch thread which will thread into each of these and then your bar will hook on to your hose once we cut our hose okay you're gonna need Teflon tape obviously for your connection so you don't have any leaks um, you'll need uh, one of these quarter inch uh, female to male plugs and I used uh, the industrial plug on all these because that's what your typical stuff's gonna come with um, for your air compressor um, and this will connect to uh, this and then you can hook it to your compressor okay and I'll show you all that in a minute okay and then you're gonna need a couple of these T's they were out of the brass T's so I used plastic eventually I'll go back to the to the brass but I wanted to get this video done for you guys and then uh, this part here um, so I I will be using these uh, shark bite clips for PEX um, but you guys can use this standard screw because the PEX obviously requires a PEX tool. Um, and the reason that I use these just to clamp the hose down on the connectors is because those screw connectors can be kind of sharp on the edges and bulky. And I know this thing can be dragged in and out a lot, probably by my kids too, and I don't want them cutting their hands on it. So um, I'll use those. So hang tight with me here. And um, I'm going to start cutting this hose up and, and we'll see if we can build this thing and show you what it's all about. All right, guys, so obviously I'm going to start here with my fittings and my connectors and putting Teflon tape on them. So let's get going and I'll show you that. Okay. 
when you're putting this Teflon tape on, just ensure that it doesn't get over your lip there. It'll block your airflow. And since we're using a quarter inch hose already, probably want to get as much flow through there as we can. And again, you guys can use 3 8 inch hose. Um, I simply used quarter inch hose for bulk. Um, it'll fit in, in, in smaller areas. I may lose a little airflow. I don't know. We'll just kind of have to see. And, but I'll let you make the judgment call on your own when you build it. You can use 3 8 hose or you can use quarter inch. Like I said, I just used the uh, quarter inch for space. And I know that you guys that are overlanders, you know every little bit of space counts, especially when you're carrying a 25 foot hose around with you. Um, that this one will go, uh, you know, through or back because then you can just loosen this up, you know, all the way up and hopefully it'll just completely let your airflow come through. Okay, I scared myself. I thought I forgot a fitting. But if you buy the hose, it's already got the fittings on it. These will screw into each side just like so. Okay, so I went and got a few tools because I know if I don't do this on camera, everybody be asking me, you know, or saying I didn't tighten it or whatever. Okay. So I got the wrenches that I'll need to tighten these properly. So just make sure you get a good tight connection on all these um, because if you don't, um, you will have air leak. And if you have air leak when you're doing one of these pressure or air down kits, um, depending on the one that the leak is on, you may not have a, the same pressure in all your tires which would kind of defeat the whole purpose of this. Let's pop outside and we'll get a measurement. Now these are what I have to cut it, guys. These are just uh, PVC cutters. Um, you're, you're gonna be able to use scissors, or just some sharp shears or uh, a razor blade knife, exacto knife, whatever you got. Okay guys, so the very first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to put your ends together and find the exact middle of your hose, okay? And you have to cut it right in the middle. This ensures that you have enough hose to get right down there to both tires at the back. And then take your X-Acto knife or whatever you have and cut it. And hopefully whatever you have is sharper than what I have because it's not that great okay then you want to take this put it right in the middle of your rig because this is where your hookup is going to be 25 foot ain't gonna be long enough it doesn't look like it's not twenty five foot may not be long enough guys but I do have a solution for it maybe may not even be able to do anything with it. Hang tight. Okay guys, so I screwed up. I only bought 25 foot of hose. It's gonna take two of these 25 foot hoses. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use these pieces to go to the front two tires. And then I'm gonna go buy another piece to do the rear two. So uh, stay tuned here. I'm not probably gonna be able to finish it tonight because it's a 30 minute drive to town. 
Um, but I will show you a finished product when we get down here. Okay, so I'm back inside here and I'm gonna go ahead and continue to hook this stuff up because I can get most of it finished. I'm just not gonna have the back two lines on just yet, which is no big deal. All right, so I'm back from the store and they didn't have uh, this size air compressor hose, so I just got some of this braided line that's uh, a quarter inch. I've put a fitting on it. I got two pieces for the rear, put my ends on that, and this is supposed to handle the 200 PSI, which it should only ever be at like 40 at the most, you know, if you're airing your tires up all the way. So I'm gonna continue putting these together here. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and start crimping them. And like I said, since you guys are gonna be using your twist tools, you won't have this part. This is just PEX fittings, PEX crimpers. Unless you use PEX, then if that's the case, you should know how to do that. But see, that's, that's the kind of uh, fitting you get there if you do that. You just got that one little hump in it as opposed to like a screw and sharp metal hanging off and all that. So I didn't have metal elbows as you can see. So that's why I'm kind of stuck using these plastic ones. Which I'm not too happy about because I do have a feeling these are going to break. This will slide down. Go on to this. Like so. Okay, so this. And don't want to forget your fittings. So now we've got fitting, fitting. Okay. This one needs one. Okay. Now this will actually work to my favor because now since I have two different color hoses, I can put clear to the rear. And then we know the clear hose hooks onto the two rear tires. Like so. Okay, let's go give this a shot out here. Okay, so now, like I said, we've got two different colors. We got clear and we got blue. So we know clear goes to the rear. So you can come all the way back here and use your fitting here. Hook on your rear valve stem. Okay, and then we have enough slack up here Took our blue one onto the front. And these are a much better connection than my old one. Same thing on the other side. Hook the rear up first to keep them from getting so tangled. Clear to the rear. Good secure fit. Okay. Hook this one here. Okay. So now. While these are hooked up just like this, um, what it'll actually do is tire pressure is a lot like uh, electricity in the sense that it will go to the path of least resistance, right? So the tire that has the least amount of air in it. So if you just hook all four of them up like this, the tire pressure from the heavier filled tires will actually push air into the lower tires. And what that'll give you 
is obviously if you have a tire that's low or anything like that, you can actually fix a flat this way. So that's uh, benefit number one to this system. Okay. So we should be able to turn this on. Come on in here close. And that's our tire pressure of our tires. 35 pounds. Okay. If we want to let air out, we just open that valve and we're losing air now. Can it see the 34? Okay. So we don't want to let air out because we're not airing down. And if you want to speed the process up on airing down, you hook your hose up here. like that and that causes air to come out a little faster on there but okay so we've lost about a pound of air so what we're going to do now is we don't want a lot of air out we want to air up let's see what we can get them to I was a little worried about the diameter of this, but it seems to be flowing pretty good. Air compressor's a little hot. It's off, and I put a traditional uh, coupler on here, and it's worked great. And I air all four tires up. So there we are, we're at 40 pounds. So, with it unhooked, we're at 39 pounds. There's no more pressure running through the system. And then if we wanted, we could drain air off just by loosening this cap. But I think that... I think I'm pretty happy there. And we're gonna set this right at 39 pounds. So the way you set it is, as soon as you hear water or air leaking off, Then you snug it back up. And when there's no air leaking off, you know that your your uh, your gauge is set to 39 pounds of pressure. So what that means is you set this to 39, you hook up your compressor, and then you walk away. And as soon as it hits 39 pounds, it's done. It's not gonna put any more air in your in your system, right? Or say you wanted to air down to 12 pounds. You would twist that all the way until it shows a 12 on here and then you walk away. And it'll air your tires down at 12 pounds for you. When you come back, they'll, they'll be done. So you, it, it takes out having to stand here and do this manually. It's very nice. So we'll start at the rear again. Remember, clear to the rear. I like that new little slogan now that I have clear wire. And uh, just unhook them from each of your valve stems. Also something I want to tell you guys, make sure that when you do this, um, all of your connectors have a good valve stem connection because if they don't, what you'll have is you'll have one tire that's not the same as all the rest. Okay? So again, thanks for tuning in. Please let me know if this helped you out. Drop me a like. Drop me a comment. Subscribe if you want more cool ideas like this. Or if you think somebody else has got a cooler idea, go subscribe to them. But you can subscribe to me anyway because we got cool trail videos, so check those out. But I'm not an engineer. Now we're going to see how small this thing folds up and how good it looks and all that. Let's see. Let's see. That's all that springy crap. And if you have a trash roo, you can pop this thing right in your little trash roo and be done with it. Not bad at all. Nice little bulk of hoses that look like you're getting ready to go install a soda machine at a fast food restaurant. That's all you need. And I'm gonna stuff this baby right back in my trash -roo. Perfect fit. You never know when you're gonna need a toilet on the trail.
Well, I guess you'll know, it's just a matter of how long it takes you to find out. So, if you have any suggestions to this idea or this little engineering project, project as a whole, let me know. Don't be a jerk, though. See ya. Build it yourself. Now you know how. Thank you for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you on the trail. One of these.